that we put some space aside for our own self-care, our own self-determination of what we want and what we need out of life. Mm -hmm. It's important as well to look into the connectivity between a higher power and our own mortal mobilities. We are limited to the things that we are not privy to if we don't seek them out ourselves. So you have to start seeking it out for yourself rather than relying on someone else's dictation of what it is to be, as some people say, spiritual, alive, awakened, knowing, you have to seek that out yourself and then from there you can start creating your own roadmap in terms of dealing with mental health. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in closing, a lot of black men in the LGBT community are struggling with not just mental health, drug addiction, um, sex addiction, lots of different issues which, 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 which a lot of people in the community are suffering but we're focusing on black men mm -hmm. because this is what we see that is lacking and missing mm -hmm. and the voices the black the black men voices in the community are not being heard so we want to address those so we can figure out how to um, provide programs for black men within the LGBT community to actually be brave enough to come for it because years ago a lot of the black community did not come to the t Toronto LGBT community and participate whether it was pride or going to the bars or just socializing in within the village now we're seeing more black people that are more visible but their voices aren't heard as much they're, they're trying to get a foothold into making sure that their voices are heard now. But what do you think the black LGBT men who are really suffering behind closed doors? Because you know a lot of times they're disconnected from the white communities which controls the village. Mm -hmm. So what do you think black, what's the first step black men should do um, to make sure that they are receiving just not inclusion into the community itself, but to seek the services that they that they need instead of suffering behind closed doors, what do you think they should do? Well, that's a multifaceted um, point of, 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 of putting it in, in terms of integration, and being part of, being accepted, dealing with, and as well overcoming a lot of these struggles that we face. It goes back to decades of conditioning. We need to uncondition ourselves from some of these things that are so-called keeping us apart from barriers that are keeping us in this prison, this caged state of living. So what we need to do is to be vocal, one, about our needs. Mm -hmm. Don't look at things as wants look at things as needs. We need our space too. We need to be part of. If you're going to label us in terms of living in a community or living in a community as being inclusive, let me feel like it is being done. So we need to voice it. We need to put our voice and put action to it as well. So we need to also proactively make spaces that are including us in it, in those decision making parts as well. So we put ourselves there and said, you know, I'm part of this decision too. So let my voice be heard. Let my action speak for it too. In terms of dealing with some of the behind the doors issues, use as much as you can what is available to you. We are sometimes limited to certain things that are in society that we can use as tools to help us with some of these addictions. But the one fundamental thing I would say to people is that don't always blame yourself because you're not at fault. You're not at fault for some of these things. Different circumstances conditioned us into certain situation that we find ourselves in. It's how we deal with it. Are we dealing, dealing with it on a moral level? Are we dealing it with a reactive level? If you're dealing with it reactive, it means that you just want something out of it for the temporary relief. But if you do something with the understanding that you need to deal with this issue and face it head on and be 
accountable and put it into context that you're not impeding somebody else's ability to exist, that's the most important thing you can do, is that you're not doing it to affect somebody else. What you're doing is not affecting somebody else down the line, but what you're doing is also just lending to the fact that your experience lends to someone getting over that issue or that problem that they have been facing because they can borrow from your experience and said, you know what, I've seen this person do this, this and this and this and then I could apply some of that technique to me so I can get over this issue. Just to touch on the issue of drugs, we all at some point have come in contact with it. But it's up to you as the individual to say to yourself, if I have somebody at my place, do I leave it out for them to see? Or do I put it in a discreet place? But if they ask for it, be honest and open about it and say, listen, yes, this is what I do in terms of this, this, and this, and this. This is how I do it to safely get me through. Mm -hmm. You are lending yourself to that person, creating a positive idea about how to approach something that may be considered morally wrong mm -hmm. or morally, you know, in disadvantage to somebody. You're mm -hmm. giving them the tool to say, I'm touching this with good intention so that you don't feel the negative effect from it. Okay. Simple. Wonderful. Now, I just want to say in closing today, um, I want to thank you for being on the show today in conversation with Larry. Um, you've given us great insight into um, a lot of some, some steps we can take towards encouraging black men to seek mental health services and break down those doors so they can receive, um, get into some of the programs that will benefit them here Aligning in Canada. Aligning themselves with things that will benefit them. That's yeah. the most important thing. Is that not everything is going to align with you. And this mm -hmm. is the, the facts of life. Not everything, because we all have different strokes when it comes to existing. Mm -hmm. But if you have aligned with things that will help you get through a, a situation, then use it to your best advantage with good intention. So that at the end, you know the outcome is going to be good for you, but not stopping somebody else's from accessing that same services and getting the same result or similar result because not each result is the same. They are similar in experience but different which means it's you. It becomes your experience, your solely experience that is working for you. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you so much today for being on the show in conversation with Larry. This is Miss Clive. We just call you. <laughs> this is what we call him in the community, Miss Clive. And he gave us his um, thoughts on how what he thinks black men should do to address their mental health and also incorporate themselves into the village, the the gay village, the LGBT community, and how black men are stigmatized for whatever the reason is but yet their voices need to be heard loud and clear and it's very important for black LGBT uh, men to be very visible so I want to just say thank you today for being on the show and giving us a little bit of your insight and until next time in conversation with Larry Miss Clive <laughs>